Hello and welcome to The Social Recruiting Show. I'm Katrina Collier. I'm a social recruiting trainer and speaker. I'm, of course, joined by my no longer cast wearing gorgeous co-host, Georgia Knight. Yes, we're so excited about that. No more dirty pervs out there. Um, who is an employer branding genius, extraordinaire, wonderful, but all around human being. And today, super, super excited to have Tammy Colson, founder of Talent Group, with us to talk about a very provocative topic too. Welcome, Tammy. Hello. Hello. You're joining us. In the 11th hour. Yeah, we made it just in time. Can you give us a little background of um, maybe how you got into recruitment and then what you're doing right now with Talent Crib? Sure. Um, so, yeah, recruitment. Uh, I was 15. <laughs> <laughs> My dad owned a talent uh, recruiting agency when I was a kid. Cool. So I got started really early um, with a Robert Half franchise and uh, tried to get out of it by going into the Marine Corps. Um, then got out of the Marine Corps and my first job out of service was recruiting. Um, and then so, so, I, so you escaped recruitment by going into the Marine Corps yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it didn't work. <laughs> There's polite extremes, no? <laughs> Very much so. Um, went and got an education in nothing that is related to recruiting. And the first job out of college was recruiting. Um, <laughs> Love it. So I've been doing HR recruiting for about, I don't know, 15, 20 years, I guess. Uh, probably longer than that if I did all the math. Um, but started yeah, Talent Crib. <laughs> no. Started Talent Crib about seven years ago. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's grown into a small consultancy uh, focused primarily on helping um, small businesses that really can't afford in-house recruiting or mm -hmm. HR. Uh, and we do policy, we do uh, performance management, we do recruiting, um, and I do a lot of work with uh, putting together veterans hiring initiatives in the Northeast Ohio area. Yeah, which is seriously cool. Yeah, we yeah, it's them. fun. Yeah, because we had um, Aaron Daniels and Joe Weech on talking about that topic, and I think there's just so much confusion around all the terminology, and half the time it's recruiters just don't understand. If they understood that, they would see more easily how to get hire people. Because I was and sitting I, there baffled through most of the show. Just and throwing. I think, too, veterans don't do a, a really good job, especially newly released veterans, don't do a really yeah. good job of explaining what it is they did. They yeah. kind of think everybody knows what they did. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a problem on from, from both sides. Uh, mm. We're working to fix it. And, you know, yeah. the veterans' in, in, unemployment is the lowest it's been in decades. So yeah, <laughs> a lot of people out there doing a lot of good work. Yeah, which is good, hey. Really, really good. So I'm trying to think, oh, you know, it was at um, the Meeting of the Minds conference in Dallas when I was there a bit back. I had a speaker, a Colonel, come in and talk about exactly that. It was really ins inspirational. So tell me, you're here because um, I was tweeting about why don't recruiters get the hell off LinkedIn and go over to Facebook, um, my favorite topic in all, of all time. And because you wrote this provocative remark about recruiters being lazy. So yes. <laughs> I've been doing it long enough. I, I know this. <laughs> but why do you think they're lazy? You know, I think that in any job, and really it's not just recruiters, it's yeah. any job. If you find something that works, no yeah. matter how well it works, if, it's, if yeah. it works enough, it's really yeah. easy to not change. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple of different aspects to that, I think. You know, candidate selection, pushing back on hiring managers, using new technology, you know, and those are just the top three. Yeah. You know, people yeah. are lazy. Um, yeah. And I think recruiters tend, um, particularly third party recruiters, tend to think this is the way I do my business and therefore you're going to comply. Yeah. Um, I know I did. I thought that way. Yeah. Uh, and I went with a full time internal recruiter and realized, yeah, I can't play that game. There's too many stakeholders. <laughs> <laughs> and they're right there <laughs> in your face. <laughs> Have you ever worked internally or was it always been more agents? No, I, I worked um, as HR and recruiting internally um, for about 15 years. So I oh. was with Home Depot um, with a large, large manufacturing company called Old Castle. Um, with Home Depot, I had five stores, I think. So 3,000 employees. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, I've done both sides of the fence. Yeah, I bet that's yeah. useful seeing both sides. It is. Um, and I try to actually work internally, you know, from an internal standpoint now. 
Um, that's one of the reasons I like the, you know, I've developed the business the way I have, is that I have the ability to go in and work very closely with those hiring managers and with the CEOs and and with the, the lead senior leadership so that they get a, they get the sense that I'm their recruiter and I'm not yeah. somebody just, you know, oh, I'm going to pay a fee to. I, I think it's quite hard because when they, I mean, I don't, I, you'll have to tell me if it's correct in the US as well, but here when they put like these preferred supplier agreements in and everyone gets pushed back so far, and then it's like, because obviously the best relationships are, when I was third party side, was being able to go in and do exactly what you're talking about. Agreed. It's tough when procurement kind of go over there or HR goes over there and you're like, I can't do my job. So sometimes actually it's imposed laziness, isn't it, rather than? It really is. There's so many different um, external factors, you know, mm. the technology, the the HR rules, you know, you've got, I've yeah. worked with C, uh, CHROs that do not value recruiting. Yeah. And it's like, I can talk till I'm blue in the face, you mm. know, they're not going to fix anything. Um, so yeah. it, it tends to make internal recruiting look lazy, um, but and you know, granted, there are plenty of internal lazy recruiters. Yeah. <laughs> They're not exempt by these stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I mean, well, that's where it started, wasn't it? Because I was talking about the whole LinkedIn thing, and I think that still that ability to do a two keyword search and spray is the problem. Yes. And that's, that's why LinkedIn is a problem. I mean, I did laugh because when I put it on Facebook, somebody, oh no, she's gone. <laughs> oh, I hope she's still there. Are you still there, Tammy? Oh dear. I mean, no luck today. I know. Hopefully she's coming back. But the, the, it was um, one of the ladies from LinkedIn wrote a comment <laughs> about because this... obviously I'm always slagging off LinkedIn on Facebook. <laughs> oh, she's really gone. Oh, oh she's back. There I, I have no <laughs> idea. You are. There's a gremlin in the internet today. I have no idea. <laughs> I can hear it. It's making this bizarre noise like we're in a washing machine. So what's Michael written order? I can't it's interesting you saying when he, he have to work and I've heard this I think to some extent that when you're outside you have to work harder because you're only going to get paid to some degree if you're going to make the placement where a recruiter they've got a salary and they they still have to make placements but it's not maybe as as what's the word I don't know but if your hiring manager's like right there <laughs> yeah and I understand what Michael's saying, that, that if you don't make placements, you don't eat. I mean, and I, yeah. I own a business. I'm there. I get yeah. up. I don't do the work that needs to be done. I don't eat. Um, yeah. At the same time, death, I think. in case, in Mike's case, death. Yes. That's very dramatic, mate. Very, that's, that's, that is rather very text and dramatic. <laughs> um, but I think that, that, you know, like, you know, we started this conversation with the technology, mm. but mm. with negotiations, with candidate interaction it, you take the easiest path you, yeah you know, and like i said it's it's it happens in all fields it's mm. not just recruiters absolutely um, yeah but if you're if you can get okay candidates on linkedin why spend the time to learn how to do it on facebook mm. i mean that's the laziness that i'm talking about yeah you know i it's, just it's I, like, okay, I, can get three. I don't need more than three but if yeah. it works then why do you need more than three or we don't really care if they're that great. We care if the hiring managers like them. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. That's the truth. It doesn't matter if they're phenomenal. It matters if the hiring managers like them. How many clients have you ever worked with that are okay with a C candidate? <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's because that's what they want to pay for, or that's where they are in their in their growth progression, whatever it is. Who are you missing out on is more my thinking. Oh, but I agree. Not going beyond. You know, I mean, Audra's actually, she's just shared some awesome stats with me for my presentation next week, haven't you, for Facebook um, advertising and stuff. It's like, so if you're not doing that and like spreading that net even that way, which isn't that lazy, is it? I don't know. How much time does it take you to do one of those, Audra? No, not, not much time at all. And you're also reaching people that aren't active, which I think is great. Right. Because those people are the perfect person. Working. Yeah, they're not hanging out on job boards, and those people can be good, or they could be, you know, not as good. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Have we lost? No, Tammy I'm again. Sorry. No. Oh, every time you don't move, I, I'm like, oh gosh, she's gone again. <laughs> 
What's Mike written here? Great way to dilute the capability of a team is re recruiting mediocrity. Can we have small words for me today, please? It's Friday afternoon. <laughs> yes, it is possible for recruiters that don't care. Yeah. I think there's a lot of recruiters that don't know either. So Agreed. if they can't see the how to do it with complete ease, they just think, oh, it's not possible, rather than actually just mm -hmm. going to that brilliant search engine called Google and looking up how to do it. Well, it, it, they don't they don't want to learn because what they're doing they think is working. Yeah, I mean that's really where it is. You know, I when I train, rec I go into companies and train rec small small yeah. teams of recruiters sometimes, and they're they're like, I didn't know you could do that. I'm like, no, really, it's a LinkedIn search. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like, wish for this, a company is a, this has been around ten years, <laughs> but you know, it's particularly in small business that mm -hmm. that's the reality of it. Yeah. Um, they think a lot of people think i've always done it this way why should yeah. i change it Audrey, what were you going to say i worked for a company once and we had about at least 10 recruiters internally and they only there was no sourcing they just took the applications that came in the ats they looked them over they passed some over they didn't even know what boolean was or anything they just took what came passed it to the hiring manager but that's when you're really missing out but do you Truly. remember when Chris yeah, do you remember when Christopher Kurtz <laughs> told me off because at SRSC in January, a room full of in-house recruiters, I oh, said, yeah. who, who x-ray searches LinkedIn and not one hand went up, well, except for David Nicola at the back. And I just went, really? Like, so stunned and so patronising, apparently. But it yeah, was, I think that's it uncommon. It to me that all this time later when that's such available knowledge that people don't know. Well, they, if they have recruiter seats, they don't need to know it. That's another thing. Sometimes you have all this great tech, so you don't need to dig deeper and learn that stuff. Yeah, but I okay. think it's super useful. And I think to some degree, some of the, the ways that that technology works makes us not look at what that technology is doing. Uh, um, Home, Home Depot is an excellent example of this. They are famous for growing their own software. They have, yep. they have teams in Atlanta, they build whatever they need. And I walked into a system and we're talking about 2004, oh. um, maybe earlier than that, 2003. Walked into a system and I asked, so how do you verify your I-9s? It's a standard HR question in the United States. Huh. You know, how, how do we go through this paperwork? So just what's an I-9 just for- I-9 is your law. immigration form. It's okay. required by law, has been since 1986. Um, everybody that goes Quite to work important. has to fill it out. Um, it's proof you can, you can legally work in the U.S. So yeah, yeah it's, it's a little important. And I just asked the question, how do you, how do we complete our I-9s? And they said, uh, what's an I-9? And I'm yeah. like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go into the system and it's there. It's part of the, the onboarding process, but for human resources managers that worked there for years didn't realize that that's what they were filling out they didn't realize that there was a system on the back end that connected it to the federal government that verified things oh god they had no idea <laughs> so to some degree our technology when we don't understand it yeah. what it's doing it again makes us lazy it's like how did you not know that was an i9 <laughs> how did you and not I know that you could search linkedin yeah so we were just before you came on while you were having your panic in the background rebooting <laughs> uh Audra and i were talking about hr tech world and i said i'm still back at recruiters can't use the tech they have now and you just given an even better example than the ones i ever give <laughs> it's just all brilliant absolutely it is nothing but mike you are absolutely right <laughs> if you two aren't connected you have to be michael just says it how it is it's so good yeah, i like that about it Oh, bless. What's Debbie written here? Audra? Yeah, this is a good comment. I found that people really do want to do better at their jobs. They just don't know, which you kind of mentioned the training. Yeah. But I don't know, is indication is that an indication of laziness? Um, you're only yeah. ever Google search away from knowing. That's true. I think yeah. that uh, I don't know and I don't care to know. Um, yeah. I think that's the indication of laziness. I don't mm. know, it's just a lack of knowledge. Um, mm. You know, when, when we have folks that come to these conferences and they want to learn and they take all these cool tools back and do something with them, yeah. um, you know, but when you don't, when you go and you don't do anything with it, that's laziness. It's, I do it. Yeah. I go to a conference and find all sorts of cool things and then forget about it 15 minutes later. <laughs> 
I must admit, at ARE, I started saying, you know, like, thank you for the feedback, which was really lovely, but what are you going to go and change? I was trying to prompt them to go that next, okay. whereas usually it's really nice just to take the huge ego stroke of all the lovely comments that come through, but it was like, no, what are you going to go change? Like, what? I what think it's, you pick one thing or two things, yeah. and, and you try to get better at those things. Mm. I think we get into a little analysis paralysis sometimes. Yeah. Um, too much information, and I don't know how to process all of this simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. That's. I mean, that's what I find with training and conferences. It is a lot coming at you at one go. I like to break it down. If I can get my clients to do it that way, it's awesome. You know, yeah, I, I think they do. Write, write down and deliver it over several weeks, and then you'll have a chance to go play. But I also wonder if it's like the laziness is time pressure. So, you know, like again, this morning, a client gets in contact and I worked out how many roles these recruiters have per person. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I was okay. going to just bring that up. Some of them have like 50 roles to fill. They don't have time to source. They're just None. They're just panic. And that's a management issue, I think, not seeing that that's not effective. I see. And I think that happens a lot. I think. And then they're too scared not to advertise, but they spend hours going through all the crappy advertising. <laughs> advert responses i was uh, on contract with nestle a couple of years ago and i was staffing their marketing department uh -huh. and we had three i think it was three marketing associate jobs it's entry-level marketer so yeah. you've got an mba and you might have done some internships maybe and if it was the cpg cool i mean that was the barrier to entry and there were 1100 applicants for one job Oh my God. That, just shoot so now. yeah, I didn't have to source because I really only had to like call the first 20 because everybody was qualified Jeez. because it's, you have an MBA and you might've done an internship. But how do you find yeah, the best one in that situation? Because the best one could have been number 356. Um, I go mean. through every application. Yeah. I mean, that's the only habit. That's a habit. And it, I mean, it cost me a lot of time, but you're right. right. And I always have said that. Number 962 could be the best candidate, a most amazing person ever. So I, and, I do go through every application. But then, of course, going back to laziness, and let's flick it onto the other side, it, so some would be ignorance. It's actually really hard to write a resume stroke CV. It, most of us can't blow our own trumpet that way. <laughs> but also, a lot of it can be lazy. So they'll just flick over what they think is a good resume so we're still recruiting on the basis of someone's ability to write so i think that's resume. so true i think that's really yeah. interesting mm. the so the Jobio, and they're trying um, to do something different about that because of the fact that we really are still doing that, so um, that and i agree with michael that it, they could have raised the bar or should have raised the bar but we're also talking about a the largest uh consumer product goods company in the in the world yeah and an open job and oh by the way it pays a hundred thousand dollars a year Jeez, so, um, yeah, lots of people want that job. <laughs> yeah. And, all, and nobody, we didn't do anything to advertise it. It was literally, yeah. you, it, it goes on the I website. wonder if there's something in the job description that could have weeded out, self-selected people out. I'm not sure, maybe not. It did. Um, we, we didn't do sponsorship for the role. Um, we, you know, we wanted somebody with a marketing focused MBA Mm. Um, and didn't interview anybody that didn't have a marketing focused MBA. Mm. Uh, and those were immediately got, you know, taken out um, so, yeah. because the questions would read them out. Um, yeah. So yeah, but it was, there were 1100. Um, I mean. So, you know, it's like I said, it's the largest CPG in the world. It, it, and I know a lot of companies that deal with that. I really do. You know, when I get 300 cashiers for a Home Depot job, mm. <laughs> And they're all qualified cashiers. You know, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They must have a good reputation amongst cashiers then as well. Because <laughs> if they didn't treat them well, then they probably yeah. wouldn't. They, they paid above minimum wage, it, mm. it, it, particularly in an area that needed that kind of income. Yeah. Um, and there's a great, you know, it's one of those places that people want to get in because they can stay for 25 years and grow with the company and become yeah. a manager without having any you know background except oh i was with i've been with home depot for 15 years so it's well, those are the same. still now that the recessions and like there are now more jobs aren't there it'd be quite interesting to see how overwhelmed they're still getting with applications a yeah of i would be along. curious um the process has changed a lot over the years there so i would be very curious to see what it, what happens but i yeah. also think that in to michael's point that 
that to some degree can when someone when a recruiter's in an environment like that for so long they yeah. it's easy to get lazy it's easy mm. to not learn to source or learn to oh. to do some of these other uh x-rays with google and that kind of thing because mm. you don't need you don't you never need to literally yeah. never need to yeah but you know i spent hours sourcing other senior roles i mean that was that was one end of it the other end is i had a job that was i had zero candidates <laughs> yeah so like, don't sometimes you just want to say can we not advertise can i go hunting first yeah please <laughs> let me just go look <laughs> yeah let me go look first can you just give me a few days before we get overwhelmed it's like just reallocate the time i spent a lot of times talking about that as well so you're saying not even post the job but just sometimes, source yeah I mean, just source it should just get delayed i'm all tangled up here <laughs> It, would have it probably would have taken me 20 minutes to go find five very well qualified candidates on LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Or, you know, right. hey, school, any school, let me call them. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you're on an awesome day rate so you could just spend the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. So it's going to take me five days on my awesome day rate to get through that rather than 20 minutes of sourcing. Yeah. But again, it comes down to um, having the skills, isn't it? And the lazy, not being lazy to yeah i don't know what the end of that sentence was going to be can you tell it's friday <laughs> afternoon <Yeah. laughs> oh dear it's not good i'm actually a big fan of um the linkedin recruiter certification if you, if you have a recruiter license um i got it and like pe some people are making fun of me because it's just not cool and it's not the name is it's not it cool really taught me i'm how actually gonna unfriend you now <laughs> it really taught me the tool so well though so i was yeah. actually you know if we're gonna the companies that spend money on this tool you want your recruiters to really know how to use it because it's, it's there's all sorts of collaboration pieces and it's yeah. this and that and um, it really did teach me it so i think if you're gonna pay then you should have to do the certification that goes with it i would agree with you on that um i've had a couple of clients that that bought and had recruiter seats before i ever got there and yeah. one of the things i had found is that the recruiters didn't know how to use it i mean they right. they used it but they didn't know how to use it they yeah. use it to um, advertise and quite honestly, I don't have a recruiter seat because um, I, of the, when I do recruiting for a client, it's a little bit different. Um, um, so I don't have my own recruiter seat. So I'm not really up on all of the stuff that, that the LinkedIn recruiter has to offer. I'm not at all. Uh, so Animal asked, do I do Frank and I ever have any arguments at home about recruiting? Um, <laughs> so for those that don't know, my husband <laughs> is Frank Zupan. So if you have heard of him um and he and i are both in the recruiting industry um and that's how we met so there's a whole backstory oh, oh, but, just a little love heart sliding off across the yes <laughs> um so yes we actually do have, have i wouldn't call them arguments i would call them intense discussions yeah um about recruiting and recruiting strategy and hr stuff um we try to kind of limit it because marriage yeah. <laughs> But we do have those conversations and we have very different perspectives on a lot of things. So it's kind of nice to have okay. that somebody to bounce stuff off of who gets it. Yeah. You know, he's been in the industry a little bit longer than I have, um, only because he's a little bit older than I am. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it's me. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I think it helps. So People I think it's weird, going but back it's really to I mean, going back to the recruiter license, I actually got a beautiful email that was asking me if I'd like to be head of sourcing somewhere. And, you know, I'm forever using the screenshot that Mark Lundgren gave me. Thank you, Mark. I know you're here somewhere um, from the re the training for the recruiter license that gives a template, which is all I, 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 I. And I literally got that template in like it, it was and I was just going, oh, no. And that's my other issue, because unless it is hyper personalized, the response rate is really low. You might as well not personalize it at all. Like it's almost, it, apparently it's equivalent response rate if you just can't be asked. But actually, if you go to the complete extreme, like most of the great recruiters we know do, and throw in something really quirky, and you know, people will open them. So I think that laziness is causing a lot of problems as well. Yeah, I think people think it takes longer than it does too. You just kind of go to Twitter, pop in their name, maybe look one other place, boom, you've got enough information. I feel like you don't even need to do that. You can just use a Chrome extension like Amazing Hari or Discoverly, and I'll just you know like there it is. You know, you don't even need to type. That would be exhausting <laughs> having to do that. You can just click. 
But then it's like include it in the conversation. Is Cameron here? I don't think Cameron's here for Firefish. He sent me that awesome um, LinkedIn invite to connect with it. He got where someone wrote, and I like Arctic monkeys as well. And it was like, cool. Someone's made a real effort. Somebody paid attention. Yeah. And he was really awed. And he's like, oh, I know who to send that to. <laughs> well, you know, and I, I think a lot of this, and we kind of get wrapped up when we're going to HR tech and we're going to these conferences, we kind of get wrapped up because there's a lot, there's a few big main companies out there, right? Yeah. And the recruiting for those companies is a, is a whole lot different than recruiting for the electrical construction company on the yeah. side of or the, the people that make the big blow up uh, inflatables for like football games and yeah oh yeah yeah you know like the if you've ever like seen a, an NFL game and the thing that the Ravens run yeah. through <laughs> yeah. the company that does that is that makes those is here in Cleveland right um, I, they have been my client for a while um, but that's there I, I was recruiting sewers and graphic designers yeah that's you know that's the, as as high up the food chain as that got that's a different level of recruiting yeah then you know i'm looking for the next innovator for google <laughs> yeah some of those that requires and can be found on the internet mm. little polish ladies who sew for a living aren't on twitter <laughs> no but you would find them on facebook for a nice maybe paper click advert <laughs> maybe <laughs> um, that was i actually found them in churches <laughs> okay you actually had to recruit that kind of person? I did. <laughs> did you go to a Polish church then? I, I went to several and posted yeah. things on their bulletin board and had we ran an ad in their old school uh, in their program. <laughs> old school. Oh my god, I love it. Oh, yeah, good point, Animal. Why Polish? I must admit. Actually, they're probably excellent seamstresses. Um, it's the neighborhood. <laughs> right. Interesting. Some of them were also Ukrainian or yeah. There was another Slovenian. They're really Slovenian. good at that stuff, though. I don't know why. They just are. Maybe, um, maybe being poorer countries and they've had to, rather than um, we we can just go to Kmart. You know, assuming that Kmart sells clothes where you I are think as well. It's, a lot of it is tradition. Um, yeah. The yeah. women that I talked to that I was hiring were like the kids have gone to school, kid, are in school. They are looking for yeah. something to get some work. You know, they want to go to work yeah. full time. They want benefits, um, and they kn have known how to sew for years yeah and they're experts and yeah. so yeah it was it was it was an odd thing um but it was fun <laughs> all the school works it's like you know yeah, i can yeah, still go to my supermarket and see these adverts so well I, and i agree yeah that's what I thought, Mark. but these folks have been here i mean they some of them were born here so oh okay <laughs> they really haven't lived under communism they're just a polish descent mom and daddy were polish <laughs> the mindset will have come down from the parents though they did to make um, there's, there's enclaves here in Cleveland yeah. that are How um, interesting. very uh, ethnocentric as far mm. as their, their culture is concerned. Um, but there's like 40 or 50 different nationalities represented in Cleveland. It's odd. Um, I never would have expected it when I moved here. No. Oh, you have a large Hungarian population apparently. And the largest Slovenian population outside of Slovenia. Wow. Which, not even I only know that they are in Slovenia. So it's like, <laughs> they're obviously all in, Hawaii, in um, Cleveland. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, re it's really neat. The, the, the city yeah. it was in, has been in, uh, international since the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, so you find all sorts of fun. a reason for me to come there. I haven't made it there yet. It's like, no. <laughs> I haven't done that state. <laughs> you can come to Cleveland anytime. I know. You need to find time in the diary and jump on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> Be quite cool. But that so was again, clearly an example of not being lazy because you went right out of your comfort zone and yeah. thought of something really unique. Well, well. yeah, you got to find them somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, my, like, my question was, what are we so afraid of, wasn't it? It was like, why are we so afraid to do that? Like, if you get the results, what's the problem? Yeah, I, and, you know, I think um, the way the economy, and I, I, I don't know about about the UK, but yeah. here the economy for a lot of years was very company driven. Mm -hmm. There were plenty of people, yeah. so you didn't have to go looking. They all came to you. I mean, yeah. you had people knocking on the door every day, all day, looking for work. Yeah. Um, and then, then people, it changed because people were holding on to their jobs and they weren't leaving. 
Yeah. And then we went through the cycle last year where everybody was leaving. I mean, I, you know, yeah. I had, I knew 50 people in HR in Cleveland that were looking for something new. Um, so getting used to that, I think it's, it's changing faster now. So you have to yeah. be more adaptable. And also back then you didn't have like a review sites. So people didn't, yeah. if you were crap, they didn't know maybe. <laughs> so. Unless you were just like a friend. But also, uh, go back to the other side. I mean, for, for those who are capable of running a search, which of course they could be too lazy to do. <laughs> but you know, HR jobs, Cleveland, boom, there's a million. I feel confident to leave. And you know, Tammy and I didn't have that when we started out. I actually, Audrey, you mightn't have as well. It was the newspaper. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, you know, and I'm sure I think I talk about this every show, but that lack of transparency, that's huge. I, I don't know how many are embracing that, though. But you would just go to Google for a job, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, That's what, 2000, the job I got in 2002 came from yeah. a newspaper ad, a local, I lived in a town of 5,000 people, yeah. newspaper ad. Yeah. <laughs> but I also love the fact though, that the um, people are being treated better within companies now. Like you said, with the review sites or drone it, you know, they have to, because again, the transparency, I, I love that side. Cause we did not have that when we started out. Yeah. So if you've gone to the paper, was it the only job? Mm, who knew? Horrible. It's there lovely to see Mr. Stroud has joined. <laughs> Hi, Jim. <laughs> Mr. Oh, yeah, what calls me that? Oh, Jimmy. Don't call him Jimmy. Sorry. You know Jim. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you, of course, know Jim Stroud, don't you? <laughs> yes. And I will only always call you Jim. No, no worries. <laughs> I know. It sounds very strange. He's bigger than me, so. <laughs> well, I, think, I love I sorry. You think this stuff is why there's that whole Google search where you put recruiters are? Or do you think that's oh. one of the bad experiences like with talking to recruiters? What, yeah, what do you I think? Guess, um, you I think one? because we can, because we sometimes suck really hard. We it's <laughs> awful. Um you know we forget oh, to get we are contact. some useless parasites and annoying uh, <laughs> okay hang on i'm gonna write <laughs> develop no, I'm with like when you're talking to one and it doesn't really maybe he or she doesn't really care about you and just wants to push you like bad headhunters or is that about talking about spamming it could be a combination of all. okay could i just say putting in developers we get lazy flocking to blockchain boot camps king, <laughs> new king makers and the new rock star <laughs> Say that again. Everyone's search is going to be a little different. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm doing a UK one. <laughs> Only searching on Google is lazy. I know, Jim, but you know. <laughs> first one is recruiters are useless. Say that again. My first one is recruiters are useless. Yeah, I got useless as well. Yeah. Jeez. Actually, the biggest complaint I get is about the disappearing recruitment recruiter, which I also think is laziness. I mean, fear yeah. and laziness. Yeah, you know, I don't want to go back to tell me we play it's, yeah. it's difficult. Um, it, it became easier because we could just send an email, but then we don't send the email. So, you know, yeah. some of that is, you know, from an internal yeah. side, it's HR says you can't say anything mm. and, or a hiring manager who still hasn't made a decision, even though they've made the decision, they just aren't telling anybody. Um, and on the, from the third party standpoint, it's what's, who's closest to the money. I mean, that's what we're mm. taught, right? Yeah, you, you work hardest with the candidates that are closest to the money, so you mm. kind of forget the rest of them. Um, and I and that's where I was going with that third party thing about yeah, get lazy about remembering that they're people. Yeah, on the other end of there. Yeah, it My used to be human. different when they walked into the agency to fill mm. out the card and hand you a resume, and you were face to face with them all the time. Mm. I've worked with. I can't tell you how many candidates that I've never met. I mean, they've been yeah. in jobs for years and I placed them several times and never met them face to face. Quite a large in part of the country. Quite a large number of my Facebook friends are actually IT contractors I placed back in the day. Mm. It, it just made sense to me to be human with them. And I appreciated the fact I was earning money off them. And some of them got so good at getting themselves pay rises that helped me get a pay rise. Like, because I was nice to them and didn't disappear. Like, it's kind of no brainer, right? So, mm -hmm. what's Jim written here? I'm not a number, I'm a free man. A TV quote, I guess, yeah, cool. that could apply to the candidate engagement experience. I'm a number, I don't I'm know what you know. Uh, are you being like World War II? 
Oh, he's not that oh, old. Maybe. Right? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm awful at, at movies and TV shows. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Jim, you're absolutely right. There are many more search engines out there besides Google. I appreciate that. <laughs> but kind of, it's very easy to overwhelm ah. HR and recruiters with training as it is. The Prisoner, a 70s show. Uh, Tammy, Audra and I weren't born then. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to say that, but unfortunately I know that show. Oh, God. Um, yeah. I just am awful at any sort of TV and music and movie yeah. trivia. I actually don't know that show, but that might be a US show. Oh, don't you dare, <laughs> oh, dear. Tammy, how much feedback do you think do you need to give a candidate that's maybe second runner up or third runner up and isn't going to make it? Do you have to call them and give them all sorts of feedback or do you just say, sorry, it didn't work out? What do you think? Is um, I, I actually judge that based on how the candidate has given is working with me in the process. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just, hey, I just need to know the information. Some of them ask a lot of questions. Those that ask a lot of questions, I try to satisfy that sort of innate curiosity that I know they're going to have mm -hmm. um, and at least try to give them a direction that, you know, the person that and, and be, try to be as transparent as possible um, with the feedback. Some of them just they just want to know. They mm -hmm. honestly don't care why. They just want to know. They know that they're qualified to do the job and they realize that the other guy wore a better tie or whatever it mm -hmm. was that. that you know, move the hiring manager to make the offer. Um, it, even so I, I judge it, before, I try to judge it independently, but everybody gets an email regardless. But even if it's before and they've just submitted that resume that they're really crap at writing, like if it's something really, really obvious where you could say, hey, run it through a spell checker. Like you, yeah. you're not representing yourself well. Uh, just the, the basics. Um, it depend, it honestly depends on my workload, how much yeah, of that basic yeah. feedback that I, that I will give. Uh, you know, I am working on a role right now that it's a fairly low level role that for this client and they've got, yeah. I've got a bunch of people. Um, and it's, you know, the people that obviously didn't read the job description. Oh, you're a, you're a work in a pharmacy and you want to do accounts receivables. I, I don't, uh, I don't get it. <laughs> you don't have an accounting degree or any. Yeah experience I, I don't know i used to call them pizza box guys or pizza delivery guys yeah yeah you know they apply to be the the ceo or something because but they deliver pizzas um those folks i just i i just reject because it you know that's if you can't figure out why you didn't get selected i i mm. can't explain it to you yeah <laughs> um but okay. everybody else like people get angry though don't they as they well do. which is yeah why well, i ended they up can die mad about it it's okay I mean, that's why I deleted my post yesterday because they just suddenly all got really aggro. And I just thought, God, you're writing all this aggro on the internet where people can find it later. Mm -hmm. And then I just got fed up with it. So I just went, oh, delete. I missed it completely. Oh, I mean, it, it's the people that are active on LinkedIn that don't actually <laughs> do the obvious things, sales, marketing, <laughs> recruitment, and entrepreneurism kind of thing. You know, the actual normal people like outside of all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they, they're just, they're nuts. But anyway, <laughs> it was just, they get really, my life is like my personal space on Facebook. But it's funny because actually using Facebook for recruitment at no point do you actually need to add anyone as a friend or do anything like that. You don't even need to message them on there. You could just start there and go off. Like I tell people to start LinkedIn and go off. And there's this weird, hey, you mustn't. And I'm like, really? And who's to say that most people couldn't care? It's all about how the approach, isn't it? So. Well, you know, interestingly, um, one of my small clients uses Workable as their ATS, yeah. and it imports the the social. It's, yeah. it, it's automatic, so yeah. it's there in the in the profile. Um, I have had to train my hiring managers to not click on those links. Um, it's like, yeah, that's that's not our business, and yeah. really? you know, if what and when you get to that point. But right now, that's not our business. Yeah. Well, I thought Katrina, you would say that they should click on that. You say recruiters should. To, but to get a conversation started, not to rule people out. Okay, yeah. like if they're snorting coke on the weekend, really obviously, and they place that on Facebook, stupid them, right? <laughs> and it's a public post, stupid them. I mean, honestly, it's 2017, nearly 18. People know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I use it in the positive. It's that conversation yeah. starters. What can I find out about Tammy that I can use in conversation that'll hook her in? Doesn't that apply to I, I don't. I never teach it to rule it out. 
But doesn't right. that um, talk interview? Then if you know that they like baseball, that's something to chat about at the interview, or is that crazy? Um, I give my hiring managers those tidbits. <laughs> Same. I really don't want them scrolling through people's and this because <laughs> then then I have to have really weird conversations of yes, I know she just had a baby. You really can't have a conversation about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mm, see that shows like remember, really old-fashioned. I work, with, fashion I work with small businesses. Yeah, who don't have HR departments, who don't have recruiters. Mm. Sometimes I'm the first recruiter or or HR consultant they've ever encountered. Mm. Um, so there's a there's a steep learning curve sometimes. And it's quite funny because I know um, I was actually I was watching a TV show that was set in the seventies. And I was watching, or the East set in the 70s, and I was watching the behavior of the two policemen to this woman going, wow. But that's how it was. And everyone's like, oh, my God, you know, but it's 2018, 17, 18. But actually, it's not that long ago. So actually, it's we've had to have a huge attitude shift to go, no, it's not okay to go. She's just had a baby, so therefore we're not going to hire her because she might need to go off on sick leave. Like, it's not that long ago. When my mother got engaged in, it would have been 1959, she had to resign from the bank. And that's my mom. So it's like, it's not. You, she uh, had to resign from the bank. She didn't have a choice. Yeah. She got engaged and she had to resign. They hmm. just assumed that she'd pop out a baby. To be fair, she did. But this is beside the point. <laughs> it was, like, it, I mean, by the way, sorry, she was married and then had a child. She didn't do it the wrong way around. Not me. <laughs> just I had but, a, a company that I worked for after I got out of the service um, yeah. and I was, I had gotten engaged and yeah. the, there wasn't a lot of tweaks. We were, I was just part, I just prior military. He was active duty. It was like 30 days before we were getting married and mm -hmm. the job I had said, why don't, why don't, we're going to give you a severance. You need to focus on, on your marriage. And I'm like, wait, mm -hmm. it's 1995. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, the so good news yeah, was, is I took the money and went and found another job because they were awful anyway. But that yeah. was that was the icing on the cake. I'm like, seriously, I'm just getting married. <laughs> yeah, but also in 1995, I mean, to to walk out of a job just like that would have had some fear. That's oh, where yeah. I do love that the world's changed so much that you can you can see. You know, now I happily, well, I'm my own boss, but if I was in a job, I'd happily just walk if there was shit because it's like, oh, I can go to the internet and find something else. So. The, the well, yeah, in 1995, we were changed. still looking in the paper. Yeah. Audra yeah. <laughs> wasn't born yet, but we were still looking in the paper. Are <laughs> they giving you a ribbing down the side here about... <laughs> is it the thing of Gen Z? But isn't Gen Z, like, really young? Yeah, digital yeah. native. <laughs> I'm not even a millennial. I'm way old. Madonna <laughs> was born in the same year that Katrina's mother got married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah what do you think about all this? Millennials are one way and Gen Z is one way and what are the Gen X is another way. Just be you warned, if you don't say it's bollocks, you'll be in trouble. You have to say it's bollocks. <laughs> well, I think people forget that millennials are like in their mid thirties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All these young millennials. And I'm like, I don't know, in, the mid, in my mid thirties, I, I was a senior leader of HR at a company. I, yeah. You know, come on, I was setting policy, not whining about it. <laughs> I think people forget that that's how old millennials are. Yeah. My daughter's 26. I think she's at the tail end of that millennial business. But it's it's still ridiculous. So I'm, I'm catching up with Cass tonight. My um, school friend just happens to be over from Sydney. And I, I was, I'm sorry, or just heard this before, but, you know, the four of us grew up within five kilometre squares on the North Shore of Sydney, two are high flyers and blue chips. I run my own business. Julie's in SMB, two of kids, two have it, and we all want something completely different. Yet we're four girls born in 71. Oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? Yeah. And it's a tiny little radius. And you're kind of going, how can you possibly say millennials are one way or the other or Gen X are one way or the other? Like, just fucking get over it. Everyone's different. Some people embrace tech and some don't. That's a difference. Mm -hmm. The non-tech users you do need to talk to differently. It, it's, it can be more challenging. So I'm dating this really lovely boy and I have to wait hours for him to respond to messages because he will go on to data when he feels like it. And I'm used to like messaging Audra and she'll respond like that because she's there all the time. It's like, wow, this is really weird. I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> but it's, you're you're it's very right. Dangerous. He just doesn't get it. He just can't be bothered. It's like he'll answer when he feels like it. It's, um, it's not his age you're saying. It's just how he is. Personally. How he is. And he'll just pick the phone up and call. I was in the middle of dinner last night. He just called. And I'm like, oh, well. 
<laughs> I've got a choice to answer or not. It's like this is I really weird. My phone rang. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the call. That was what was hilarious. My phone was sitting next to me. <laughs> Gotta love that. So, Queen. My daughter is a young Ed's... man that, that doesn't embrace tech hardly at all. Um, being, no, she's a millennial. In fact, she has his phone more than he has his phone. Right. <laughs> So yeah, and he's 29, right. yeah, something like that. Yeah. So right smack in that whole, you know, supposed to be married to technology business. Mm. But I think that again goes back to laziness. So somebody started this whole trend about this is what millennials want. Let's focus all our time on millennials and forget about everyone else in the business because, you know, they're so important. And everyone just bought into it because they were too lazy to go and do their own research or too lazy to talk to the actual people or or, or have the critical thinking thing that we've failed miserably the last, I don't know, 10 years. Did we stop teaching that? Is that how that happened? I think um, it was the internet because there's only Google, Jim. <laughs> now we just Google and then we take here. Wikipedia. Just... <laughs> <laughs> so what, does that, what was that critical, how do I Google that? How do I spell that? <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to take the Wikipedia response because that's accurate. <laughs> Always. <laughs> The sources are accurate. I won't. I, I won't vouch for the writing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just crap sourced, right? Wikipedia. Oh yeah. They do. Well, it depends. It, though. Um. I know. Back in when I was in college, we could only use it as a tertiary source. I'm. A, I would just call to be a historian. Um. Yeah. So the whole research thing was part of my gig. Um. And it was. We were allowed to use it as a starting point. Yeah, just much like you would use an encyclopedia, mm. and you had to prove everything that was in the you know was oh this is the the information now I have to go find the sources and prove that if I want yeah. to use that information. So I consider Wikipedia sort of along those lines. So you learn to research, hence you're very good at doing the sourcing, because you've got the curious mind to go and dig and check your facts and find someone somewhere else. And I also had grew up in a household where I had to prove my point. Oh, okay. If I brothers? if I had an argument about something, I had to prove the point. So was that um, so parenting, or have you got that brothers? Was, that was parenting. No, oh, I, okay. I'm the oldest. Um, okay. Now the only, but I am the oldest, and yeah, it was right. that was just. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> My father's a lecturer. Well, was a lecturer, so I kind of got the similar. But he would never spoon feed his students, so you had to learn. So. Hmm. What's the, oh God, what's going on down the side? They're here? having a weird hectic. conversation about Bing or something. I don't know. Oh, right. It's not Google. Bing stuff. Yeah. I know there are other search engines, Jim. It all depends about who you're teaching, though. Some of them just freak out. Like, what? <laughs> I had to stop using Yahoo because I, the front page was too much news and horrible things. I'd go on there just to do a search, and I'd be like, oh, my God, and I'd be depressed the rest of the day. So Rabbit I, holes. Yeah. <laughs> Not a fan. I like how Google. I must admit, I've stopped watching the news since you guys voted in that man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean you two personally. Obviously, I know damn well you didn't. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I just and then I wish there was a way to block it out of my feed. I'd love to be lazy enough to be able to not have to see his head in my feed. We could sort that out. That would be great. <laughs> so. Just there are, there's a mute function. You should you could try that. I'd have, have mute, I'd have to mute people. most of you guys who share really, really amusing stuff about him, though. Didn't his oh, Twitter account just get deleted, which was Yeah, awesome. I guess an employee was leaving and they took his Twitter account. <laughs> I cried. I was laughing so much. That was brilliant. Yeah. So, I, they said they were doing an internal investigation about that. From an HR perspective, I'm wondering what the heck they think they can do. He left. He, he, he quit. <laughs> yeah, I guess how he had the access. Maybe he wasn't meant to have the access to the people's, I don't know. To off and on. Maybe they yeah, need who has access to accounts if someone can just go delete accounts. True. Maybe it's something they need to consider. You've <laughs> been known as the man who switched off Trump's account. I just think that's awesome. <laughs> Is it, I assume it's back on, right? Yeah. It, it went back on in 11 minutes. Yeah, it wasn't very long. Yeah. No, sadly. I just wish they could switch him off. But anyway, that's another whole conversation. <laughs> I can say that now I have global entry and I have to worry about that. <laughs> As she's speaking of people being lazy, God, that guy was miserable when I went to do that. Oh, it's a yeah. classic example of interviewing, and he was just really grumpy. Like, I don't know why you're getting global entry. You're still going to have to queue up. And I'm going, but I'm queuing up with the Americans. It's going to be way quicker than queuing up behind Air China. Like, I'm sorry. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. 
how not to interview. <laughs> Jeez, so, uh, it's all good fun. Oh, we're running out of time. It's going too fast. Tammy. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, God. So if you had to give like baby recruiter, just starting out, given insufficient time to learn half of this stuff, <laughs> what would be your top tip on how to not be a lazy recruiter? Getting back to the point at hand before I complain more about. I really working. think that the top tip on how to not be a lazy recruiter, the, the one that is so obvious is yeah. to pay attention to your candidates. Yeah. And pay attention to the quality of your candidates. And if you don't have the quality of your candidates, go figure out where they are. Yeah. Um, relying on post and pray is the ultimate. I mean, that's the ultimate. And in, in I don't really care what comes through. Mm. It's whoever happened to be interested. I mean, it's easy, mm. but it's not quality necessarily. Can be expensive. Can be yeah. expensive. Some job boards are 300 bucks a job a month. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Gosh. Um, so yeah, paying attention to the we, candidates and paying attention to the quality of the candidates. How do we know the quality then? Knowing your your job well, right. knowing you know that that what that job entails. So, so that, leave you know, office. Truly go judge talk to business. Quality. So talk if to you're lucky enough to be in house, literally leave the office, which some of them are scared to do. Yeah. I used. I, think, to, I mean, I used to meet with my hiring managers. They saw me more than the recruiting group saw me. Yeah. Do you think it's ever good to talk to the employees as well? So you talk to the hiring manager, but then also the other, say you're hiring an engineer, engineers at the company. Just, I think that's oh, a good that's a, persona. That's like yeah. what, one of the things I tell every recruiter I train is go have conversations with the people that actually do this job. Yes. And then report back to me. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, I want to hear what they say so that if we need to have, go have a conversation with the hiring manager, Mm. who may have a different idea of what yes. this job really is mm. and we can have that conversation as well uh, but yeah talking to the employees that do the work that's yeah that helps you know and a thousand getting, but also getting them to talk as well so five guys just did a brilliant video for their general managers in their stores and it's so real again it's like chunky and real um i shall have to share it with you audra that's also i think really important now not just from the recruiter so that the recruiter can back it up and when they send the car like the you know hi tammy i'd love to talk to you about this role and hey here's a link to see what it's really like you know you've got something meaty to jump into as well I, Jimmy. the thing about the keywords i yes. never learned yeah. to do that by the way i've well, never so learned to search ATS. yes some ats is just kind of do it i think like, you turn it off or something because yeah i, I I don't, I don't filter resumes. I, I just don't. I just look at them and evaluate. You know, you really read 1100 resumes. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> if you, if you how, much of those, how much of those 1100 uh, resumes do you actually read beyond the first paragraph or two? Um, I read the first page. So if it's longer than, because of the, because of that particular rec, I read yeah. the first page. It was longer yeah. than two pages. Why are you applying this as an entry level job? Um, uh, okay, got you. Yeah. So, but yeah, I tried. To, I do actually try to read the whole first mm. page of a resume before mm. I say nah. Yeah. And they, I go to the second page if they, you know, if the education's on the back end to see if no, oh, does this person have a degree in the field or a degree at all or mm. you know? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, in that respect, we're still broken. Yeah, because we're still even with what I teach, we're still rec recruiting on the basis of someone's ability to write a profile, that resume. We'll get there. I, I do it's a time. I do a lot of training with my man hiring managers um, and clients on ignore mm -hmm. unless unless you're hiring like a copywriter. Yeah. Ignore the typos or the misplaced, you know, tabs or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if we need a pretty resume, we can get a pretty resume. No, I don't mean pretty. I mean um, inability to write achievements. So, oh. I mean, the biggest tip I ever got years ago from Ray Murphy, I call him Papa Smurphy, so awesome. Um, he would just say, say, so what? Like, you write your bullet point at the end, so what? Mm, and like the, you get the which means that. Mm -hmm. It works for copy as well, Audra. So it's like, you know, oh, I changed that spreadsheet. Well, so what? Which meant the company saved millions or whatever. I'm exaggerating. But yeah. it's that. Which meant what? <laughs> like, so what? <laughs> wow, that's a really good tip. Yeah, I, I think, love that. I think the way I was trained years and years ago, because, you know, yeah. 15 and my dad taught me how to do this, yeah. um, was 
do they have the basic qualifications for the job? Okay, then talk to them. Go mm. find out because resumes are awful. Mm, yeah, I like that too. You know, and so maybe I spend more time on phone screens than yeah. other people do. I don't know. It's, See, I mean, I, I, I don't think I do. I still love the phone. I think you find out so much in seconds and you can tell how enthusiastic somebody is because you could have the perfect resume, pick up the phone, talk to them, and they're like, oh, hi, Katrina. Oh, oh I've had that. Job. You're like, yeah, bye, <laughs> clunk. And you compare that, that happens. I will compare that to my one week on online dating where you'd go through all of this bullshit chit chat and you'd finally get through it and talk to someone and they'd have a voice that would just make you like nails down a chalkboard or a blackboard or whatever they call them these days. And you're like, no, no, I'm not oh. Or you know, the perfect yeah, digressing. Phone screen drunk. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> like, no. Really? It's 9 30 and you sound like you've kind of been in the tank already. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we need to write a book on this oh my god like horror stories i might have one of those as well maybe we should just start compiling quotes from recruiters of their horror stories we can have a whole book out tomorrow it'd be awesome we need to do that <laughs> drunk phone screens are the best oh my god so they're drunk from the night before no they're only they're only the best when i'm the one that's drunk yeah yeah <laughs> because we do know that you like a wine sorry oh no you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I still can't believe you guys have sat at a table together and can't remember each other. You put, nobody was that drunk. Was, uh, how many people were there? Is there like here. 25 people there. I know. Yeah, but I'm sure Audrey was sitting next to me. Cameron, I mentioned you earlier. You have to go, rewind. <laughs> I think he's only just appeared. Oh, bless him. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. He was so late. It was so late. I was mentioning your um, LinkedIn connection to request that mentioned the Arctic monkeys. So. Debbie had a candidate show up for day one of alcohol with mm. on his shirt. Oh my God. I now feel very sick. Um, on that <laughs> note, I'm just going to mention our next guest, which is so bad. <laughs> Who also likes the wine? <laughs> um, Shannon Pritchett's on in a fortnight. I can't do next week. I'm sorry, guys, because I will be on my way back from the Czech Republic, which I'm super excited about. Um, but the week after, 17th. Yep. Shannon, so that will be all sourcing geeky stuff. Audrey will be sitting here going, <laughs> <"Sourcing." laughs> Fortnite, that would be in two weeks' time. No, that's a British term, Jim. I will teach you some English one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Debbie, do a show of horror stories. Will you do the show? Will you come on and be our show of horror stories? We could finish the year with that, actually. We don't yeah, have a guest for the final. Oh, it would have been a good Friday. Halloween one. We missed it, though. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> HR Happy Hour used to do HR Horror Stories mm. on Halloween. It was kind of fun. Really we would do that oh. next year. We Debbie, we're lining you up for that for next year. <laughs> right. We're out of time. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy, so much. Thank you. For coming and joining and, and sharing your horror stories amongst everything else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Debbie's in. Yes. Always looking for good guests. Brilliant. Um, thank you again. Thank you, Audra. And we shall see you all in a fortnight. That would be two weeks just for you, Jim. Two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tammy. Bye. Bye.